Hello, my name is Gloria Robert. Today we shall be looking at the topic, basic ecological concepts. Objectives of lesson. By the end of the lesson, students should be able to 1. Define ecology. 2. Mention the two types of branches of ecology. 3. Define some ecological concepts in the topic. 4. Mention the two components of ecosystem. And 5. Enumerate the interaction among the biotic and abiotic components of ecosystem. Ecology. What is ecology? Ecology is the study of living things in relation with the environment. Ecology is a branch of biology. This is the study of the interrelationship between plants and animals with their environment. In another world, we can say ecology is a study of the relationship that exists between organisms and with their environment. Now, types of ecology can also say branches of ecology. We have two types of ecology. The first one is called horticology. Now, horticology is the study of the relationship between an individual or a species of organism and its environment. The focus here is an individual or a species of organism. For example, if an ecologist decided to study an organism, for example, a dog, and how the dog relates with its environment or the relationship that exists between this dog and its environment, that study is called horticology. Or such an ecologist pick a species of organism, for example, the human species, and decide to study this human species and how they relate or the relationship that exists between them and the environment, such a study is horticology. Now the second type is synecology. Synecology is the study of the relationship between several individuals or several group or species of organism and their environment. Our major focus here is several individual or several species or group of species. Now, if an ecologist decided to study like 10 dogs at the same time and how these dogs relate with their environment, such a study is synecology. Or it picks several species of organism, for example, the human species, dog species, um, rat species, maybe plants like the maize species, and decide to study all of these organisms at the same time in relation with your environment. Such a study is sign ecology. Now, ecological concepts related to the study of ecology include, the first one we are looking at here is biosphere. Now, what is biosphere? Don't forget the biosphere is also known as ecosphere. This is the part of the earth where living things occupy. It is the part of the earth where living activities take place. So any part of this earth where we can find life, that part is called a biosphere. Now biosphere is grouped into three and they are one, atmosphere. Atmosphere is the part of the earth made up of air or gases where living things occupy. You all know that some microorganisms live in the air. Number two, hydrosphere. This is the part of the earth made up of water where living things occupy. The meaning is rivers, ponds, lakes are examples of hydrosphere because we have aquatic organisms living inside them. The third one here is lithosphere. This is the part of the earth made up of land where living things occupy. Now land a solid surface where we have living things like termites, earthworm, goats, cats, and even plants like maize, and of course we human being. So the land is an example of lithosphere. Now the second concept which I'll be looking at is habitat. Habitats can be defined as the natural dwelling place of an organism or the place where an organism lives. In another world, it is the home of an organism. When we say home, we are not talking about our bedrooms, our libraries, our city room, no. Because we actually have two types of habitats. They are aquatic habitat and terrestrial habitat. So some of them live inside water and some live on land. So we live on land and our beauties are found on land. Now habitat can be in air, can be in water, can be on land, can even be in or on trees. There are some of them that live inside trees and some of them live on the trees. 
Now let's look at community. Community is a group of different organisms which can be plants and animals living in a given area which can interact and reproduce successfully to produce offsprings of their kind. When we say community, we are talking about different population of organisms living and interacting together at an area. Or when we have different kind of organisms, all right? Mention them, we have goat, we have cats, mosquitoes, we have microorganisms, we have human, we have plants around, and all of these organisms live in an area and they interact with one another. Such make a what? A community. Now the next one we shall be looking at is population. What is population? This is defined as the total number of organisms of the same species living in a particular place at a particular time. Now the way we define population in biology is a little bit different from the way we define population in geography, economies and others. All right. The key words here are total number of organisms and another one is same species. It's very compulsory. You know that same species is what you are looking at. Now the next one is ecological niche. What is a niche? This is a specific position or location occupied by an organism in its habitat. It is also known as the role an organism plays in its habitat. Okay? Now, in the class, if your classroom is your habitat and they ask you what is your niche, what will you say? Yes, your sitting position is your niche. So in an environment or in an habitat, you have a specific place where you can locate organism. For example, if you are asked to go and get earthworm in a forest, where do you go to? You go to the soil because you are likely going to find them there. Or you are asked to look for a butterfly. Where will you locate them? You are likely going to locate them where there is a flower because that is their location or position in that habitat. Okay, let's talk about termites. You can get them on dead woods. That is their location or position in their habitat. And don't forget, can also be the role or the function that an organism plays or carry out in its habitat. Environment, that is our next concept. This is made up of all the living and the non-living factors that surround and can affect an organism. If I want to redefine environment, I will say it is the surrounding of an organism which is made up of all the living and the non-living factors that can affect an organism. So as an organism, whatsoever is around you, make up your environment. Your air, your chairs around you, the people around you, the animals around you, the water around you, they all make up an environment. So let's talk about um eco ecosystem ecosystem this is defined as a community of living things interacting with the non living things within their environment this is defined as a community of living things interacting with the non living things within their environment all right it is a self sustaining unit where the living factors interact with the non-living factors in their environment to produce a stable system. In an environment, we have living things, we have non-living things. Now, when these two um, matters interact with one another within an environment, they will form an ecosystem. So you can have an ecosystem in the forest, you can have an ecosystem in um, the river, okay? For example, you have plants, you have other animals, uh, all kinds of animals in the forest, and you have... Um, for example, carbon dioxide, you have oxygen, we have water. The relationship between the, the interaction between this um, living and non-living things form an ecosystem. Components of ecosystem. There are two components of ecosystem, and they are one, biotic components, which is made up of all the living factors. Two, abiotic component, which is made up of all the non-living factors. Here is an image showing some examples of living things and non-living things. All right, let's look at the components one after the other. We have biotic components. These include all the living things, okay, in an environment. That means the plants and the animals in our environment. Living things are grouped into three, namely, we have the producers. Producers are plants. They are also known as autotrophs. They are capable of manufacturing their food by the process known as what? Yes, photosynthesis. Now, consumers, these are animals, also known as heterotrophs. They cannot manufacture their own food, so they depend on plants for their food. Consumers are divided into three categories, which are the herbivores. The herbivores are animals that feed on plants directly, like cow, goat, sheep, and the rest. Then we have the second category, carnivores. Carnivores feed on flesh. We have animals like tiger, lion, cheetah 
hyena and so on and then we have the last category known as the omnivores omnivores can feed on both plants and flesh of animals okay so we have man pigs beards and um, fox as example of omnivores now let's look at decomposers these are another set of biotic component or organisms these are organisms that feed on dead plants and animals that means when plants and animals when they die some certain microorganisms in the soil begin to break them down in the process they feed on them and make them to decay and at the end nutrient is released into the soil now let's look at the image here the first organism here the grass or grasses they are the producers okay now the producers can be fed upon by the herbivores so we have cow we have antelope and you can mention a whole lot of others too and then we have the carnivores which can feed on these herbivores like the tiger the lion and the rest okay now the grasses are the primary producers the herbivores are the primary consumers why the carnivores are the secondary consumers so we can also have the tertiary consumers and the rest now when these grasses and the animals die cow antelope tiger and as many that will be in the food chain okay the microorganism inside the soil known as decomposers will cause them to decay by feeding on them when they feed on them they decay them and at the end nutrients is released back into the soil so decomposers can be fungi it can be bacteria we can have a macro that may bigger decomposers like the earthworm okay abiotic components this include all the living things in an environment they can be categorized as the climatic factors such as temperature pressure humidity rainfall sunlight wind it can be a daffic factor like soil it can be topography like rock mountains and hills it can even be inorganic compounds such as oxygen water carbon nitrogen and others they are just not living things in our environment now let's look at some example from the image here we have wind we have water we have sunlight we have atmosphere that is air we have um soil we have temperature and many more as example of abiotic components okay relationship that exists between the biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem don't forget that we define ecosystem as well the interaction between the non-living things and the non-living things in an environment that is also a self-sustaining what unit now interaction exists between the living things and the non-living things in the environment this interaction ensures sustenance of life at each level okay now the primary source of energy on earth is the sun now plants are able to trap the sun energy in a process called photosynthesis and use they use it to manufacture their own food using non-living things components like carbon dioxide water certain nutrients from the soil and at the end they release oxygen as their end product or waste product let me not end product byproduct yes as their byproduct waste product and byproduct useful product are called end products all right now consumers these are animals they depend on the plant for food herbivores feel directly on the plants why and they are called the primary consumers then we have the um, carnivores that can feed on these herbivores they are the secondary consumers and in some food chain you can have um, tertiary consumers as well okay they are also made up of um, they also make use of oxygen released from plants for respiration so let's look at decomposer decomposer feed on these dead plants and animals and at the end they decay them thus releasing nutrients into the soil and this process continues because the nutrient released in the soil will be used again by plants okay in the presence of sunlight to manufacture their food animals will feed on this this okay the composer and the process continue like that okay let's look at an ecosystem infographic here we have plants known as the producers now the producers make use of carbon dioxide and water you can see the arrow showing that water is going in carbon dioxide is going in and at the end oxygen is released out of the plants now we have primary consumer that can be maybe rabbits feeding on seeds from a tree okay some can feed on the leaves some can feed on the roots or any so far it's a plant so this is a primary consumer feeding on seeds from the leaves then we now have a fox you can feed on these um rabbits and the fox is the secondary consumer now the oxygen released by the plant can be used by the fox and the rabbits and even the decomposers okay to 
for respiration and plant depend on the sun for its own photosynthesis now at the end when plants and the animals when they die inside the soil we have some microorganisms we call them decomposer they will cause the decay of these plants and animals by feeding on them at the end they release nutrient back into the soil the nutrient will be used up by the plants and the process is continued so that is an ecosystem so you can see an ecosystem in water bodies you can see it even in forest and savanna and the rest yes we have come to the end of our class these are student activities all you need to do is take time go to the question try and answer them if you are not able to you can go back to the video and study the st uh, watch it again probably it will give you a better understanding don't forget to download don't forget to view my videos don't forget to um subscribe as well thank you okay this answer to all our question it's time for you to quickly mark yourself yes i want to believe you had 100 percent congratulations so thanks for joining me in this class thanks for learning have a wonderful time.